When the Earth was invaded by a deadly Martian, three young astronomers went on an adventure to fight for their survival. Three young astronomers ventured into the forest to look for the green light that Hannah Jones saw passing through the sky. She figured it might be a meteor, but Herbert Wells joked that it was an alien because meteors are supposed to be white or yellow, not green. While Hannah and Ogilvy Montague were debating the existence of the aliens, Herbert heard a noise coming from behind him, as if someone had stepped on a branch. Herbert was suspicious and urged the other two to move along. On their way to wherever the green light had gone, Herbert saw a strange figure walking and followed it, separating from Hannah and Ogilvy. He looked for the strange figure he saw, but was only left in confusion when he couldn't find it anymore. Herbert screamed in fright when he turned around and found that Hannah and Ogilvy had been standing behind him. Herbert suddenly started a conversation about aliens, suggesting the possibility of their existence. Hannah agreed, claiming that the green light she saw could be aliens, as meteors are supposed to be white or yellow, not green. However, Ogilvy disagreed as he didn't believe in aliens. The trio continued looking for the green light, but their GPS lost connection and they decided to call it a night. As the trio biked away, an alien appeared and watched as the trio left. The next day, the trio was having breakfast at Herbert's home where Hannah and Ogilvy stayed the night. Herbert's mother was inviting Herbert to go with her to Leatherhead to visit his uncle. However, Herbert disagreed and argued that he didn't need to meet his uncle to still have some sort of connection to his late father. Herbert's mother decided to just drop the topic and mention the news she heard about a meteorite. Hearing this, the trio jumped up and hurriedly went to the forest, wanting to be the first group to investigate the impact of the supposed meteor. But when they got there, there were already a lot of people surrounding what seemed to be a huge meteorite. There were also police surrounding the area and preventing people from getting too close. So the trio sneaked from behind to get closer. And when Ogilvy touched the meteorite, he suddenly yelled in pain due to the intense heat of the meteorite. Upon closer look, Herbert and Hannah realized that the giant metal in front of them wasn't actually meteorite at all based on its shape and design. Unexpectedly, the giant metal opened up and inside it, they saw an octopus looking creature releasing black smoke. Hannah and Ogilvy immediately walked away, but Herbert was frozen on his spot as he stared at what he guessed to be a Martian. The metal door closed just as Hannah and Ogilvy pulled Herbert away and the trio was caught by the sergeant. To avoid getting arrested, Hannah reasoned out that they were sent by Dr. Stint, a leading astronomer in England, who was also their professor at UCL, to investigate the so-called meteorite. The sergeant didn't believe them, as they were too young to be sent by Dr. Stint. But fortunately for the trio, the mentioned astronomer arrived and helped them avoid jail time. The trio informed Dr. Stint of the creature they saw inside the UFO. Shortly after Dr. Stint's arrival, the UFO opened again and a huge Martian, larger than the UFO itself, came out. The Martian attacked everyone around it, striking them with a heat ray that burned the humans to ashes. The trio escaped the forest, and as they were biking back to Herbert's home, they witnessed another green light passing overhead, which meant that another Martian had landed. Herbert's mom had already gone to Leatherhead when they arrived, and they saw military jets heading to the secondary landing. Minutes later, they heard explosions. They opened the TV and watched the live news of the events happening at that moment. Dr. Stint was still in the forest, and she was being interviewed about the alien invasion. So far, there are still no answers that can be given to the public. No one knew what the Martians wanted, and they didn't know what they were capable of. The trio was still watching when the TV suddenly displayed static. All signals were dead, and there was no way for the trio to know what was going on. Hannah was worried that the Martians had reached Manchester, where her parents were, and Herbert reassured her that the Martians wouldn't be able to reach Manchester that quickly, explaining that Earth's gravity is three times stronger than Mars, which theoretically means that the Martians would be moving three times slower. This helped reassure both Hannah and Ogilvy that their parents would be okay as they were living far away. The trio took a rest in the meantime while waiting for any updates. While Herbert and Ogilvy were asleep, Hannah was in the kitchen when she noticed something moving in the bushes in the garden. She woke Herbert and Ogilvy up so they could check what it was and sighed in relief upon realizing that it was just an artilleryman named Baxter looking for a place to rest. Herbert allowed Baxter to come inside and they asked the soldier for an update about the situation. 
Baxter was despondent as he recalled how the Martians wiped them out, leaving only him as a survivor. Baxter suggested hitting the road as there was no way the military would be able to get the situation under control. They needed to get as far away from the town as possible, and the trio decided to go with Baxter, who was headed to Leatherhead, where his mom was. The trio and Baxter then started planning for their escape out of town when they heard another explosion. Using the transceiver, Baxter communicated with Corporal Fred from Unit D. Upon learning that Baxter was with three civilians, Corporal Fred ordered them to get to the safe zone as soon as possible without using any petrol vehicles as the Martians could lock into the exhaust trails. The group then decided to go north to Weybridge, where Baxter would join other troops while the trio would continue on their way to Leatherhead. The groups used bikes since they couldn't use petrol vehicles. And when two military jets passed overhead heading east, Baxter took the transceiver from Hannah and asked about the jets. But Fred just told them to keep heading west. The group continued on their way, stopping for a while on their way as they watched the Martian destroy the whole town. As they were nearing Weybridge, they stopped to talk to two soldiers and learned that a third cylinder landed close to Leatherhead. The civilians in Leatherhead were being evacuated and taken to London, which was so far away from the Martians. The lieutenant ordered them to go across the bridge and find Officer Marvin, who was going to take their names and arrange a boat for them. There were over 20 civilians left to be taken to London by boat, and luckily for the trio, Baxter was able to get them their own boat. The three sat on the boat, waiting for the signal to leave, when the Martians appeared. Four military helicopters fired missiles at the Martians, and everyone cheered as the Martian was taken down. However, more Martians appeared and killed everyone on sight. Hannah lost consciousness after hitting her head, and when she woke up, she was lying on the ground with Herbert and Ogilvy guarding her. The other civilians and the whole military were wiped out by the Martians, and the trio were the only survivors left. They returned to the boats and crossed the river, Walking through the forest, the trio found a priest sitting on a log by himself. The trio had a hard time asking the priest for help, as the latter was moaning about how the human race deserved this alien invasion, as it was a punishment by God for all the sins humans had committed. The priest seemed to believe that he was the only one who understood what was truly happening, which meant he was also the only one who could save everyone. After a while, the trio finally managed to get the priest to give them directions to the houses where they could rest for a bit. The trio, followed by the priest, entered an abandoned house where they found some food to eat. The priest was greedily hogging most of the food and calling the trio blasphemers. Augie, having had enough of the priest's crazy dialogues, mocked the priest for doing exactly the opposite of what the Bible says. Angered by his words, the priest pulled out a knife and threatened to kill them. Herbert attempted to steal the knife from the priest, but was easily overpowered. Hannah and Ogilvy didn't move a single muscle in fear of triggering the priest into killing Herbert. And once he let go of Herbert, the two rushed to him. The trio wanted to leave by then, but the priest threatened them to stay. Sitting down as ordered by the priest, the trio had no choice but to listen as the priest talked about how only the four of them would survive and that he was the only one deserving to give Hannah, the only female, his seed for the repopulation of the planet. After eating, the group was finally able to rest when the Martian appeared. Its tentacle wrapped around the priest and took him, while the trio found somewhere to hide, fearfully waiting for the Martian to leave. The morning came and the Martians were finally gone. The trio's transceiver received a signal from Baxter, who had survived and was looking for them. Baxter was near the forest at Putney Hill, and the trio told him to stay put while they headed to his location. The trio met up with Baxter in the forest, and he led them to his campsite, where he told them about the seventh landing and how all the Martians seemed to be heading in the same direction, which was Primrose Hill. Most people who had been evacuated to London had been shipped to Belgium, while Baxter guessed that everybody else had gone into hiding. The humans were losing against the Martians, and Baxter guessed that the best way for them to survive was to hide and wait until the Martians had gone. The trio disagreed with this idea and to show them just how bad the situation was, Baxter called another soldier who gave them a status update about the situation in London. The Martians had already reached London and had been collecting humans left and right. After a short while, Herbert and Hannah finally came up with the idea of heading to Primrose Hill and finding out why the Martians were collecting humans. 
They both didn't want to keep hiding or running from the Martians, as it would do no good. So they decided to do what they could do and fight for the human race, even if they ended up failing. Baxter and eventually Ogilvy agreed, and they headed to the city where they found the Martians wreaking havoc. They noticed that the Martian tripods seemed to be going around the same place in Primrose Hill, and Herbert and Hannah decided to head west and get a closer look, while Ogilvy and Baxter stayed behind to keep watch. As they got closer to the UFO, Herbert and Hannah discovered that the Martians were nesting. A Martian tripod approached the UFO, carrying a female human and putting her inside the UFO, which then fed all the baby Martians. Hannah contacted Baxter to inform them of what they saw, telling them they needed to leave immediately. However, a scream was the response they heard from Baxter as the latter watched a Martian tripod take Ogilvy. Baxter bravely ran after the Martian tripod, and to save Ogilvy, he allowed himself to be captured. As soon as he got closer to the Martian's head, Baxter pulled the trigger of a grenade, and its explosion destroyed the Martian, killing him in the process. Herbert and Hannah helped Ogilvy up after he fell on the ground, and the trio ran away from the place. They hid in a tunnel underneath a bridge and went down the sewers, probably the only place where they could be safe from the Martians. Ogilvy was livid at the idea of staying in the sewers and eating rats as they waited for the Martians to leave. Out of anger, he blamed Herbert and Hannah for being the reason why they were in such a situation and disrespected Baxter's sacrifice, claiming that Baxter didn't save him, but rather experienced the consequences of their stupid decisions. This led to an argument between Herbert and Ogilvy, and Hannah put herself in the middle to calm the boys down. Despite Ogilvy's hateful words, Herbert and Hannah understood that their friend only said those words due to the fear, exhaustion, and uncertainty of their survival. Hannah comforted Herbert, who was looking down, and they joked around until they fell asleep. They woke up the next day, and they couldn't hear any more shooting or bombing from outside. It was pure silence, and the trio was suspicious as they climbed out of the sewers. They went back to the Martian's nest in Primrose Hill and found that the Martians were dead. While the trio was observing a dead Martian, Dr. Stint appeared with two soldiers. The trio asked her about what happened and how the Martians were defeated. Dr. Stint explained that they were unable to do anything as the Martians defeated the military in every attempt to bring them down. The Martians simply died because of Mother Nature. The Martians saw the humans as weak and self-destructive, leading them to invade Earth. However, they didn't take into account that Earth is also home to the smallest organisms. These microbes that humans had been living with became the ultimate protectors of the planet. The Martians, despite being huge in size, were unable to cope with all the tiny bacteria that the human body was perfectly capable of living in harmony with, causing them to suffer and die. The trio celebrated the news, and they felt themselves loosen up, allowing them room to breathe. And even without saying it, they knew they had finally forgiven each other for the argument they had last night. Dr. Stint received a signal from a sergeant who was looking for Herbert. Dr. Stint handed Herbert the transceiver, and Herbert was surprised, but extremely glad, when he heard his mother's voice through the transceiver. Hannah and Ogilvy watched with smiles on their faces as Herbert, who was usually grumpy and arguing with his mom after losing his father, finally voiced out his love for his mother. They then entered the vehicle and drove away from Primrose Hill. In the Martian's nest, a tiny tentacle broke out of the Martian egg, 